Welcome to the Startup Grind. I would ask everybody if they would just stand up on their feet and uh, I'm going to have Wayne come out and we'll just give him a, a quick round of applause and say thanks for, for coming out. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So Thank not, you. Not what, bad, huh? That good, good turnout for a first startup grind. That's some Philly spirit, man. I like that. I like that. See, one That's thing. Awesome. Thank you. One thing you'll find about Wayne. Wayne's energetic and he's passionate about Philly. And you'll see that bleed through. But I think I maybe dumbed down your business a bit. I, I was talking about venture capitalism is easy, right? You, you people invest money with you. You invested in guys like Jim, and then Jim's company sells, and you, it's a win-win, right? Oh yeah, it's simple, man. This whole, this whole thing is simple. By the way, thank you. Mike, thanks for having me. Jen, thank you. Um, you know, this is, this is awesome. It's, it's awesome, awesome to be here tonight and, and doing this in Philly. I mean, like, Startup Grind's a big deal. Congratulations for bringing this to Philadelphia. I mean, this is not, there's a few big cities down here, man. This is, this is awesome. This is awesome. You, this is who you should be applauding. I mean, the fact that he brought Startup, startup Grind. So. <laughs> But getting back to your question, venture capital, man, is really simple. Like, all we do is we invest in companies and we sit back and we go on vacation and they hope they, they, hope they do well. Right, Brian? Brian, Brian ran, ran, he ran one of our companies. I mean, it, and, and it was unbelievable. He came in into a really tough situation and, and helped build the company up and, and fortunately made money for all of us. So we, we love Brian for that. But I mean, it, it is, it's, it's, the venture business is, it's not, it's not easy. I mean, because, you know, we have to work really hard, first of all, you know, to get to know the person that we're investing in. I mean, that's, that, that's the, the first part. I mean, for us, it's not, it's, it's, it's not just like, here's a little money and we go away. I mean, for us, it's about, we have to spend time, get to know who the people are. Um, and then it's not always an upward trajectory. I mean, stuff happens, right? I mean, like it, and, and, and some things happen not only in the business themselves, but things happen in people's lives. They get married, they get divorced, they have a boyfriend or a girlfriend and they get dumped. They don't get, I mean like all that stuff happens. Something goes wrong with one of their children, their kids are not doing well in school or whatever. That stuff can affect the business. And so you're, you kind of, you, you get involved in, in a lot of things in this business and I don't know, but I love it. I love it. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I wouldn't, you know, I love it. So. So you know, I'm sure a lot of people in the room, you know, either aspire to be founders, entrepreneurs, venture capitalists. How'd you get started? Well, I know I grew up and I was going to be a venture capitalist, right? <laughs> no, no. I mean, I mean, I didn't even know what it was. I mean, I, I, I was, I, look, I lived the life of, of your typical, you know, young Jewish kid. You know, what do we do? We, <laughs> we either become lawyers or doctors. I mean, like, that's, that's what we do. That's what our parents want us to do, right? So. So that's what I did. I went to college and then I went to law school and I started to try to become a lawyer and I did that for a little bit and then, then this internet thing was going on in the 90s. And you know, fortunately I had a really good friend who said, you know, you should just check this stuff out. This whole startup thing was happening. And you know, my, my wife who's back there and I, we kind of just, we, you know, we dove into it together. We moved to New York City and you know, there was, and we said, let's just get into this world. And, and, you know, fortunately for her, you know, she's from this area and she's like, you know, it'd be much better to do this here in Philadelphia. And um, she's the first real, the real reason why I came back here in, in 98 and, you know, started to just try to get involved. And, you know, fortunately for me, it's been, it was a very welcoming community. I got to know people like Rob McCord, and who many of you may know, who's now our treasurer. He at the time was running the Eastern Technology Council. And I just you know, stood right over here in Rittenhouse Square one night. We had one of the top executives from Microsoft come in town. And I stood on the square just waiting for him to come out so I could talk to him. And we ended up sitting on a park bench in Rittenhouse Square for a couple of hours just, just talking about like what's happening within the startup world in Philadelphia in 98. And there wasn't a lot, not like today at all. Um, but you know, he, he became a mentor and many other people were mentors of mine, like, like Steve Goodman from Morgan Lewis and a lot of other people became amazing mentors. And 
and sort of helped me through and, and helped guide me. But, you know, it's, it's tough, man. It's fun. It's tough. It's, it's a, it, but, it, it, but fortunately, there's, there's amazing people in, in Philly that can help guide you, you know, in, on, on your path. Before you came out, I mentioned Mike Krupit, who was the first interviewee of Gabe Weinberg, who launched Mentor Chats. If you haven't heard of Mentor Chats, I highly encourage you to check it out. It's held at FRC, First Round Capital. And I was talking to Mike on the way in here, and I was just saying, you know, Mike, I love the fact that you're, you're this guy who has this awesome background, and you're a doer. And we need more Mike Krupits. We need more Wayne Kimmels. We need more Josh Koppelmans if Philly's going to succeed. So that's my plug for Philly. Um, but one thing I, I found. I'll plug that like six more times. I mean, Mike's been around forever. Where are you, Mike? I mean, he, he's, and like, there he is. And, and like, that's, and look, I mean, the companies that he was involved with back in the 90s, it was unbelievable what he was doing then. So I think like, that's, that's, it's awesome that you're here. Thanks for, for even being here tonight. <clears throat> the, uh, Wayne, you mentioned your wife, uh, which is pretty awesome to, to have someone that supports you in what you're doing. But I think there's misconceptions at times about like, what a venture capitalist does. He's probably on an airplane from San Francisco to New York, and I'm sure you are. And like startup founders that work out of here, they're grinding. But you know, people have kids and they have lives, and you're you're active in your your kids' lives, and I, I think that's admirable. And I think you should touch on that a bit. Uh, I, I appreciate you asking about that. I mean, look, it's it's really important for 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 us to be involved with our kids. I mean, no matter, you know, fortunately that was something that I was very I was very fortunate where. My dad just made time for my, my two sisters and my brother and I, you know, all of our games we, they went to, you know, and like, that's what I want to do for my kids. And I think you can kind of, you got to work it in, you know, into, into your life. I mean, we all work crazy hours, um, but at the same time, it's important to me. I mean, I have a 12 year old and a nine year old. I want to be there at their games, at their schools, at their events. I want to experience that stuff with them. And, you know, quite frankly, you know, we've, um, you know, we, and it's just, it's just important to me. And so I, I make that time. I make that time. I make sure that I can try to, if I have to be somewhere, I get back for that. Uh, if we work till one, two in the morning, that's whatever. But if I have to be there for that time, I'm, I'm just there. I, I can attest to that, 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 that baseball draft for your son that you, you made it till you booked out and you're up till two in the morning banging out email. So, um, the good stuff that maybe you guys want to hear about. So I mentioned seamless. Uh, exited to Aramark. Uh, who else do we have here? The list is is crazy long. You've been like crazy successful. Your first two funds, Take Care Health Systems, exited to Walgreens, post IPO and Nutrisystem. Your current portfolio are game changing, disruptive B two C companies. What do you look for in a company? What's the secret sauce? Is it the founder? Is it the team? Is it the software? Is it IP? What, what is it? What What do you look for? Well, it, it's it's all about the people. I mean, and, and you guys you guys have heard that. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's the truth. I mean, the, the two guys you saw up on the screen, I mean, one of, you know, Pat Croce and, and, and Hal Rosenbluth, I mean, the, you know, being able to have the opportunity to work with a guy like Hal Rosenbluth, who was a, you know, a rock star CEO of Rosenbluth Travel, Rosenbluth International, and he built that business up to a, you know, a couple billion dollar company, sells that to American Express, and then he's going to go do his next startup. And... You know, through some mutual friends, we, we met each other, and he gave us the opportunity to invest in his company. And quite frankly, no matter what that guy was going to go do, you knew it was going to be successful. And he went out of the travel industry into the healthcare world, brought on a, a, a partner who knew healthcare cold, understood consumer healthcare cold. And the two of them went on and created an amazing company that we sold to Walgreens. I mean, and it was about the, you know, it's so, it was, a, I knew it was about him. And I, and I also knew that I, I was able to develop a relationship with him where we were friends. I mean, we became friends. I mean, and, and it was even beforehand, you know, before we even invested in the company, we became friends. And, and that's important because there are the ups, I said before, the ups and the downs and the twists and the turns and things just don't always work out the way they plant, you know, like, and so if you, if you can, you know, it, it's, you just have to build that relationship. I say, you know, even with my wife in the room, sometimes I'll say like, it's, it's even getting, you know, doing a deal with a venture capital is harder than, you know, dealing with your spouse. Like you can, like you can get married and divorced like that. Like you got 
the contracts we sign with and the paperwork <laughs> and, our, and the lawyers, it's like this high. You know, it's really hard to sort of break apart from that. And so you better know what you're doing and you better know who the person is who you're getting involved with. And, and it's not always perfect and I'm not always perfect and some situations didn't work out as well as some others. But when you do get an opportunity, like a Ben Milne, who, who we were talking about earlier. I mean, Ben is the CEO of Dewala. Um, I don't know if you guys know the company. I mean, yesterday we just announced that you know, the, um, Andreessen Horowitz just put $16.5 million uh, into, into our company. So, no, we're not done. <laughs> we just got started. Thank you. But I mean, we, we're just getting started. But I mean, it was pretty, you know, it was pretty awesome that they're, you know, they're backing up the truck for a business that we got inv invested very early in. And Raise your hand if you know Dwala. <laughs> uh, but I mean, like, you know, a guy like that, you know, we knew him for several months, maybe even more than that, before we invested in the company. And, you know, yeah, he's a cool guy and everything, but we just also wanted to just find out, like, what, what's inside of him? What, what really makes him tick? What's he all about? And we got to spend time with him, whether that was just from hanging with him and seeing how he interacted with other people at events, having some beers with him, having dinner with him, just kind of getting to know him. And, and man, he's awesome. He's an awesome guy, and I hope he's as successful as, uh, as, as some of these other guys. So, it'd be pretty awesome. You, you still, you mentioned Hal as being a good friend. You still talk to Hal? <laughs> well, not only do I talk to him, but I also um, I work with his son almost every day. There he is, Jeff over there, and uh, so and and we're investors in his next company. So he hasn't really announced what he's doing next. It's in the healthcare world. Um, we're investors in that business, and yes, we're friends and. Um, you know, he's, he's taught me a lot about uh, how to ride a horse. <laughs> um, he's, I've been out to his ranch a number of times. I know how to uh, herd cattle uh, and do the other things that you do to those little calves. Um, <laughs> wrestling a 200 pound little calf, man, you know, like it's kind of fun. If any of you guys played football, it's kind of like you tackle those things. It's, it's awesome. It's really, it's a lot of fun. Um, Let's see. Uh Gosh, I mean, again, you guys have been fortunate, but at the same time, you guys are methodical about, about what you do. Is, is, there, is there a good example? I, I've talked to you many times about, you know, how hands-on a VC should be, or every, every, every VC has their own way of dealing with portfolio companies. Is, is there a good example of, of shifting a company from, let's say, Seamless, for example, Focus on BDB, and you can talk about how they started and, and how they got to where they are. Who, who, who knows Seamless? Who's used Seamless? My wife says I use Seamless way too much, and I'm running up the bill with Seamless with every pizza shop in town. But uh, interesting story behind Seamless. I'll, I'll let Wayne kind of jump into it. Well, you said how we directed them. No, we, no, no. They directed me and my partners, and, and they, were, they were in charge. And they were younger, the most driven, the most amazing team um, I've ever worked with. And, you know, you're, you're talking about a business back in 2000 when, you know, ordering food online was kind of like weird. Like, why do you need to do that? Like, why you just call or fax? I mean, like, <laughs> you know, like that's what, and, and they, they've, they just, they knew this was going to be right. And we had major competitors being funded by like crazy giant VCs. Um, if you remember some of the like Urban Fetch and Cosmo, I don't know if you remember those companies, but like they were the, they were the ones everyone wrote about. And, and it wasn't even TechCrunch, it was, um, I don't even know what it was at the time, but I mean like at New York and things like that were like, they wrote about those guys like, and, and no one ever talked about Little Seamless. All we did was we just made sure that we got food from, you know, from restaurants right to the Goldman Sachs's of the world and the Bear Stearns when they were around and the Lehman's when they were around and all the rest of the Wall Street crew and the lawyers and the accountants and we just did our thing. And you talk about like pushing them. Well, we could have these board meetings. They were, I love them, okay? He, he, Mike likes this story, you know? So our board meetings were at this pizza shop, you know, in New York City, freezing cold, you know? We're wearing jackets and gloves because it's just so cold downstairs because our office wasn't not, like, wasn't nice, you know? we this. We had an office upstairs that was, quite frankly, half of it was filled with computers because we had to give computers to restaurants. We had to set up their DSL lines. We had to do all that work for them because they didn't have internet at the time. Um, and so we would meet in this, in this, in these, in this pizza shop and I would, I would always say to them, like, come on, like, 
like, you're just, we got to start advertising, man. We got to start <laughs> telling people what we're doing. Like, we got to start letting these Goldman Sachs bankers use this at home. No. You know, 2001 goes by, 2002, we just keep making more money. We never needed more investment, we just keep making money. 2003, we keep making money. I'm like, come on, you ready now? We're gonna put some billboards up and let people use this. We're not ready yet, we're just gonna keep expanding and do keep, you know, we'll keep doing what we're doing. 2004, 2005, finally, right around, right around five, it was like, okay, we're ready to do it. And it, it was, but it was all driven by these guys. They were so focused, the four founders of this company, and, 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 and the fifth guy who just had an amazing home run, a single platform, I don't know if you know that company, uh, Wiley Cirilli, I mean, he sold that business to Constant Contact. Um, it was kind of a spin-off, and he had an ama amazing business that he, he, he just did. But, um, you know, that group of five guys, or five people, one of which was not a guy, um, and they, were, they knew what they wanted. They were driven, they knew how to make money, they focused, I mean, they knew, the, they knew their financials down to the penny, to the penny. I mean, like, their spreadsheets were, everything was so meticulous. You couldn't push them in a direction, if it, if it would mess up the model and, and things wouldn't be moving forward in the, in, the, in the direction that they wanted to go, that's where they're going. They're gonna go do it. And, they, and, and it, was, it was really impressive, really, really impressive working with those guys. You mentioned mentors earlier, and I wanna come- Oh, by the way. Yeah, go ahead. By the way. The current CEO of Seamless lives in Philly, and he commutes to New York. So he's a great guy. We got to bring him here. I mean, Let's Jonathan would be great. You'd love him. He'd, he'd love Let's him. do it. You'd love him. Um, mm -hmm. Mentorship's important, and I want to come back to that. Did, did you have any? When I wrote the blog about startup grind coming to Philadelphia, I touched on a couple things like, you know, the Pete Mussers of the world, Safeguard Scientific days, and we have long known how to build startups here in Philadelphia, and then there's still, still things that we're trying to do to build the ecosystem, but. Mentorship is, is really, really important. Did you have a mentor going through this process, and, and what was that like? Well, I was really fortunate. I, I had a number of people, like Pete, like Rob. Um, Rob. McCord, um, you know, like Steve Goodman. And I also had a, a, a really tremendous business partner that I started with, a guy who was, we used to sort of make a joke, I knew the sons, he knew the fathers. He was 30 years older than me, and uh, <laughs> I would, no, he was a, he's actually the, um, the business plan competition at Drexel is, is, is actually named after him now. It's called the INJ Berg uh, business plan competition that his wife just named. And unfortunately, a few years ago, he passed away um, way too early. Um, I learned a ton from him. He had retired. And in 99, I said, I kind of pulled him out of retirement to come with me. And uh, we got introduced through a number of different people and we got together and it was really, really awesome to have someone who had been through the battles in the financial services industry for 30 some odd years, who had, you know, he had such an amazing story. He sold his company five different times and bought it back, you know, four times. You know what I mean? Like it was really like, he had crazy stories and, and you know, lawyers and lawsuits and this and that and big companies and small companies and international companies. I mean, like, so to sort of be around that while I was running around doing the networking and the venture scene and all that stuff, um, you know, it was, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. I was very lucky to have that. So, so what was that like though? Like pre LinkedIn days, like I get someone's <laughs> business card. If I'm not connected to them via group or via this or via school, I just enter their email address in and, and you know, if, if, you got, if you got 500 connections and you got half of a, a degree on there, you're, you're going to get connected with this guy. But it wasn't always like that. How, how did you facilitate an introduction? How did you make new contacts? God bless you. Use the newspaper, man. Right? <laughs> I mean, newspaper. We actually used to read newspapers, right? I mean, so, you know, like, you know, I guess, I guess for, for me, um, I, one of the things that I used to do, and I, I think this is what you're asking me, right? I mean, I, one of the things that I used to do is, so I see Steve out there um, from, our, from the old safeguard days. How are you doing, Steve? I know we, we got to get together. I, it, I will. I'm, <laughs> I've been out of the country and all over the, all the place, but, but we'll do it. We'll do it. Um, but, you know, there were places, you know, where people would hang out. And, or get together, and places like the Radnor Hotel, places like the Conchahawken Marriott, the Palm, the Capitol Grill when it finally did get here, right? And then the Four Seasons, and that's where like these, the quote unquote important people would be in the venture capital or finance world. That's where they would have breakfast. So 
I, you know, I, my wife would say to me, what are you doing? And I'm, <laughs> you know, we were living in a city and I'd drive out to like either Radnor or Concha Hocken and I'd go to the, go to the Marriott. 7.15 in the morning, I'd show up, I'd have a pocket full of business cards in my right pocket and nothing in my left and hopefully I'd fill up the left pocket with a lot of business cards. So I'd go up to people and I'd say, hey, how you doing? <laughs> nice to meet you, you know? And I'm Wayne and like, what do you do? I'm like, well, I, I, at the time I didn't even have a fund. So I was like, I fund an incubate startup internet company. And they're like, what? And you know, like, what the hell is that? And I'm like, what do you do? And they thought I was nuts like him. And they started laughing like that, right? And they're like, what are you doing here at 715? And they're like, oh, you know, I'm waiting for, um, you know, yeah, Jim will be here in a second. Now. We're having breakfast, you know? And I, and I would just sort of, and, and at the time, I, you know, I didn't even know who I was even meeting half the time because you weren't able to like go on Google and quickly like take a look and see an image and be like, oh yeah, that's so and so. Like, you, you just didn't have that. You just kind of guessed who people were, and you hoped that you got it right. And if you just ask, you hand it, you know, you use your business card as your way to like, here, that's I'm Wayne. Look at this, you know, like, and then and hopefully get their card. But I mean, the whole thing was just getting people's business cards and starting to just find out who was doing what around here. And you know now it's so cool. I mean, we've got places like Benjamin's Desk and Venture Forth and the Indie Hall, and you've got you know you know the whole that other country down at the Naval Yard, and you know like you've got all sorts of stuff going on in Philly, right? I mean, like you, you got the whole saw the stuff in West Philly. I mean, like it, it's it, there's like so much happening now. You can like go to a lot of places to to find this this kind of a community. Back then, it wasn't as much. Um, and it's awesome that we have this now. Um, and I think, like, you know, this is, this is exciting. Like, we're actually at, like, a really interesting inflection point here right now in Philadelphia, I think. Like, it's, we're, we're going we're gonna to make it happen here. You know, if it, no matter what, I, I'm going to try to make it happen here. And I hope that we, we, you're all here to help, right? I mean, like, like this is, what, this, we, we, we can do it. Like, we are so damn close right now to really mm. having something special. I mean, you bring in this here, the whole scene that's kind of going on around, and it's not all tech, it's just innovation. It's right. like right. young people doing cool shit. I mean, like, that's what's going on here. Like, we've got, I mean, look, I, you got me going, Mike. I mean, like, <laughs> seriously, like, like, we, we're, like, we have the most incredible natural resource that no other place has. We have over 300 to 400,000 young people that come to this town every single year to get educated. That is our natural resource. That is our Marcellus Shale. We've got it. They're here. The smartest people in the world are here. It's up to us to grab them and keep them and, 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 and make it happen. I mean, look, yeah, I keep hearing 40% are staying here. The wrong 40% are staying. The real smart ones are going else, elsewhere, okay? We got to capture them. It's up to us to do it. Okay, we need to have like some amazing startup that takes over some iconic building that, that, you know, here in Philadelphia, whether it's Liberty Place or whether it's the old Inquirer building, if Bart's thing doesn't go up. I mean, someone's got to do something freaking amazing in the city. I mean, look what the, like, the Groupon guys did in, in Chicago and took over the whole Wrigley building, right? Like, that's some crazy stuff. That's what's got to happen here. And it can happen here. It can. It's up to us to do this. Like, we can do it. And, and there's just, and, and my God, we've got the most incredible people in the world that go to school in West Philly, in North Philadelphia, in the city. I mean, right around here, all these amazing art schools. I mean, like, we've got it. We've got the talent. Now it's up to us to, like, just get it all organized. So. Interview's done. You ready to go? Yeah, let's, let's, let's go do this. Let's go get these people, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, gosh, you touched on so many things that I'm passionate about. I know a lot of our members here, and a good portion of the, the, the member, membership at Benjamin's desk is here. And, but guys like Jim, who's working on a startup, and he has like 1,500 units, letter of intent for three ad agencies in LA and Silicon Valley. I mean, how do we keep guys like Jim here? Because Jim's like, well, I'm like, I could work at Benjamin's desk, but you know, there's the gross receipts tax, and then there's this tax, and then there's that tax. And granted, we have infrastructure here in Venture Force, Seed Philly, Indy Hall. We're, we are infrastructure, and I think we're a little early. How do we keep the Brian Antolins from Drexel? He, he's about to graduate. How do we keep, how do we keep him here? Well, That's I think... Magic look, question. It's the magic question. I mean, it, it, it's the... It's as I always say, like, we've got everything, but, like, it's kind of leaks out the bottom. And why does it leak out the bottom? We just need more venture capital to fund these companies, bottom line. I mean, and 
and, and how do we do that, right? Other towns, other communities have figured that out. And I think that it's time for us to, to make that happen. Um, and we need more, like 10 more first round capitals, okay? We need more. We need more of those. We have to get more of those companies here. And other cities have done it. Other, and, and they've done it in, I mean, this is not a, like, you know, the model, the formula to do it is not, it's not rocket science. You know, our, our universities need to start investing in our community. Right. Our corporations need to start investing in our community. Our, <clears throat> our major nonprofits and the, the, the major donors of the nonprofits need to start investing in this innovation ecosystem, okay? They have to do that. And if they have to start to come together, and, and that, that'll, that'll make this all work. And who can, you know, who can convene this whole conversation and bring it all together? Right. You know, it's, it's our governmental leaders. And they're starting to do that. They're starting to have this conversation. They're starting, they're sl things are starting to happen. That's why I say we're kind of at this place. We're almost ready to bring everybody in a room and say, are you in? Let's go. Everyone's in. All the major corporations, all the major universities, everyone, what, what would happen if in Philadelphia, everyone, all those major people all put up 10 million bucks? Each. We'd have a hell of a pool of capital to go do some major things. Not all venture capital, but other types of, I mean, they would be supportive of this whole amazing infrastructure that we have going on here. Like it could be pretty, it would be pretty epic. And, and, it, and I think we're getting close. I think we're getting close because the big companies understand how important this, this, is, this is to them. I mean, they need, they, this has to, ha has to be here, has to be here for them to be relevant. Otherwise, they're not gonna get great employees. People aren't gonna wanna stay. I mean, the corporations aren't gonna wanna be here. But this city, this city is resilient. We're tough, we're a tough city. Like, don't fuck with Philly. I mean, come on, like, we're tough. We're a tough town, right? I mean, and like, we, we're, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this here. And uh, we'll make it happen. I mean, look, we got a naval officer up here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, come on. Everyone know that about this guy? I mean, he's the real deal. <laughs> Thanks. I, I drive ships in my part time, then I come here and you know, I pull over the Navy Yard, that, that country that Wayne was talking about that's all the way down there at Dock and scoot over here. I thought um, you parked out front. I mean, that'd be, that'd be nice. You get, you get ticketed here. You know, back in the day, it was cheaper to get a ticket from PPA than it was to park in a parking garage. They got smart and they bumped the price up. So now you actually got to park in a parking garage. But that's one of the challenges that we face here uh, in, in the city as opposed to being in the suburbs, right, is, is parking. So stuff that we deal with on a, on a daily basis are barriers to entry for startups and, and why they should be in the city. Hopefully, and this kind of segues in my next question, is about the infrastructure that we have in place here and this shared economy. I was, I was prepping for the interview and looking at some of the other interviews across the country, and one of my counterparts, in, a chapter director in, in one of the cities, was interviewing a young lady who was the founder of TaskRabbit, and she was discussing her views of, of the shared economy. Why are you talking about TaskRabbit? I should, Seriously. I should be talking about maybe an A&I company, maybe... Maybe Zarly. Zarly. I mean, no, it's all right. You could talk about that. It's all right. But there, there is a lot of cool, cool stuff about this, like this shared economy, right? This collaborative consumption. The fact that we're all in this room having conversations like this. Um, and it gets me thinking about what's, what's next? What's the next game-changing trend? You know, co-working school, it's still in its infancy. We're sharing cars. We're sharing bikes now at Rittenhouse Square. We're sharing uh, Uber, is their, their company's based out of here. It, all, all types of stuff. What do you think that the next game-changing trends are in, in the industry? Well, I, I, I'll, I'll pick up on one of the things you said. I, I do think co-working and shared office spaces, this is, this is, this is part of the future. I, I really believe that. And I think you guys are positioned really well. I mean, look at this location. You're a half a block from the Apple Store, a block away from Rittenhouse Square. I mean, to me, it doesn't get any better. But I mean, but at the same time, like, that's how people want to work. Like people, the, the amazing, using a, sharing a, um, borrowing our friends from over at uh, the, uh, um, uh, what, what, what are our, our buddies over at, uh, at Commerce Square? The Hub. Share, yeah, borrowing a word from the guys over at the Hub, they talk about collisions. They talk about like people kind of colliding and things happening. That's what goes on in these kind of spaces. 
And that's what, that's what, this, that's what it's all about, whether it's physical or digital. We talk about LinkedIn or the other things. Like, that's kind of what's going on, this whole idea of collisions and people coming together and, 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 make, and making stuff happen together. That's what's, I think, one of the really big things that's, that's happening in the... Um, in this in this world, I was at Philadelphia University this morning, and wow, their their MBA program. I mean, it's amazing. It's different. It's 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 collaborative. It's their office. Their 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 I call them office space. I mean, it's like it's unbelievable. Their classrooms, every wall you can write on, you know, and even right on the windows there. I mean, it's 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 just so collaborative. The desks don't all face to the front. I mean, it's really interesting what they're doing, and and I think they're they're pushing they're pushing it there. I mean, a little bit. I mean, it's really interesting with what's happening at that place. And I think it's happening in all the other, other schools. I mean, there's, it's all starting to come together. I mean, I also think, you know, one of the things that I think are, are, are interesting, I, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm a believer in this thing, which I, I haven't even tried them on yet, but I believe in <laughs> Google Glass, man. I think this is gonna be crazy. I mean, whether this is the one, you know, point one or 1.0 1 or whatever's gonna happen, but the fact of the matter is people, are gonna be, people will be walking around just being able to like take pictures, Really, new, people don't even know what's going on. They'll be eventually be able to recognize people, and you know, it, there's going to be so much happening. You'll be walking down the street. Forget about like even looking at your phone for Google Images. I'm just going to know that's Jeff, and I'm going to know. I'm going to be looking at his LinkedIn page and know everything about you, and I know what you did last night because I was looking at your Facebook page. <laughs> and I, I mean, like literally, like it's going to be crazy, and we're just going to be passing each other on the street. It's a little freaky, but I mean, it's <laughs> happening, and we, and you know, but the crazy part is this holiday season, it's here. So get ready. People are building apps and companies around this. Venture capitalists on the West Coast are funding stuff all around this. Like, there's some cra that's going to be crazy. Whether it works or not, I don't know. But I think something will come out of that. I mean, the amount of information that's available for people to do things is, and, and, and act on today is crazy. Look, I also think that there's a really big opportunity, and maybe I'm a little biased because I have an investment in this world, but I think this, the, uh, the idea of online gambling is going to be gigantic in this community, in, 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 this, in this country. Look, we're all, you know, all the states are followers. So what's happened? Delaware made it legal. Nevada made it legal. Jersey made it legal. So guess who's coming next? I mean, it's, gonna, it's happening. It's going to happen in Pennsylvania. It's going to happen in New York. It's going to happen in Florida. It's going to happen all over the place. And there's going to be an opportunity, and someone's going to make a fortune on this absolute fortunes and you know you could be like you know um, I, I heard the I don't know if you guys heard the funniest joke uh, this weekend at the um, whatever that um, that dinner this weekend that Obama had where, where he talked about what is it called the correspondence the correspondence yeah the nerd problem right but I mean it was just so funny like he talked about like Sheldon Adelson he's like you know the guy spent a hundred million dollars trying to not get me elected right he's like he could have just given it to me I may have taken it and just walked away right like I love that joke it was kind of funny but it's like I mean that how much reason why Sheldon Adelson was able to spend you know a hundred million dollars was because of the because of you know the uh, casino industry and he's making even more right now and outside of the US in Macau but like it's crazy how much money can be made on this and now it's gonna be online I mean literally we could sit right here and bet I'll be like yo you want to play uh, <laughs> you want you want to play tic-tac-toe right now for five bucks I mean and, and and you know New Jersey will take the vig on that or something like it's crazy <laughs> Uh, we're not in Jersey though, but we'll say we're in Jersey. We'll like make Scott. How does that work? But we so we have an investment, a company called Thrive Gaming, and it's here in Philadelphia. And you know Scott Bohr's right out there, and he's one of the founders of the company. And we, you know, his founder has been in and around this space for 20 years. Really understands the online gaming world. We just his Scott's partner Manu was we we had a company here in Philly called Rising, which we sold to Rock U and which is out in Silicon Valley, and it was a social gaming platform where you can win money and prizes. And now we're doing his next thing, which is with Scott, and it's, it's pretty awesome. And we think that like, that's something that's interesting. That, like, that's, a, that's an area that we just gotta, we gotta watch. We gotta watch, because there's gonna be a lot of money flowing in that, in that world. Wow. So, sh shifting gears a bit, um, you're active in the community. Every time I talk to you or email you or check my Facebook or Twitter, you're out and about, you're visiting schools, you're doing your thing, but you're also very active in Philadelphia. You're uh, a treasurer of the National Jewish Federation, uh, you're a trustee, you're a treasurer here for the Philadelphia chapter, you're also involved with Einstein Hospital. Why is that an important thing and why should all of us, regardless of what we do, uh, be active in the community and being philanthropic? Well, I think, look, 
I, I aspire to be a philanthropist, right? I mean, like that's that's like what I aspire to be. It's you know, fortunately, I think I was very lucky to sort of be have been brought up with parents that you know said that this is it's important to help others, and and I truly believe that. I mean, like, and being even the venture capital business, I mean, that's what we do. I mean, we're we're like coaches. We try to help others. We try to push people along and try to, you know, it. You know, you don't want to be too much of a nudge. You you want to be a coach and you want to help and. And it's the same thing in the community. I mean, I think no matter how successful or, or not at this point in our careers we are, there are people who are less successful than us and less fortunate and have less than we have. And we can help them. And I think it's our duty and it's our responsibility to do that. And, and that's what I, and not only do I do it because I think it's my responsibility, but I also want my children to see that. Hmm. And it was, you know, you know, whether it's, as, as you mentioned, with Jewish Federation or, or you know, the Einstein um, Healthcare Network, I mean, it, one of the most um, rewarding things over the last 10 years for me was, th was the fact that we just built this amazing hospital um, out in East Narden, on German, down Germantown Pike. I mean, this brand new, we, built, we, bought, we bought a golf course and built a $350 million uh, hospital out there. That will outlast me, my children, and my children's children. And it'll be helping people and providing health care to people. And that's a big deal. I mean, like, and, and it's amazing. Brian, Brian McDonald's daughter is, is, works at the Brownstein Group here in, in Philadelphia. And she's doing a lot of marketing and branding. I don't think you can get anywhere, go anywhere these days without seeing some Einstein advertising. I mean, and they're doing, I think they're doing a phenomenal job. They're doing a phenomenal job of providing health care to, you know, you know, our mission is to help anybody, help everybody. And, and that's why it, it means so much to me to be, in, be involved with them. And it's, it's, just, it's just important. I mean, we have a bigger, we're all here, there's a bigger purpose than, than just, you know, our startups. Absolutely. You know, stuff we do. The, uh, the, the interesting thing is, uh, is I wanted to really focus a lot of the conversation about what's going on here in Philly, but we touched on that a bit and we'll come back to that. But it dawned on me as we're going through some of the, the challenges I see here in Philly, you have crime and you have education. Two things that we definitely got to tackle if we want to make this uh, an awesome city for, for just the economic reasons. Uh, Carmen Dawson is, raise your hand, Carmen. Carmen, Carmen brings maybe 10 or so charter students from the Mastery Charter School here every two weeks and does some mentorship and entrepreneurship training with them. It's really, really awesome. You know, what advice or challenge do you have for the entrepreneurs and the founders in the room to, to circle back, give back to, to the youth be mentors or be involved in, in what capacity? I know this is a big passion of yours. I know it's a big passion of your partner, Tony's. How do we, how do we create this next generation of human capital that might not be as privileged and, and, and have them aspire to be, you know, the next guy who launches the chapter in wherever? I mean, look, it, it, it goes back to what I was saying earlier. I mean, it's, it's, our, it's our duty, it's our responsibility. And it's also, if we're gonna have a great community going forward, we're gonna have people who are either, who are gonna work for us, or we're gonna work for them. We better help them. We better help these young people. I mean, and we it's it's our responsibility, and it's 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 just not right that you know just up the street you know kids are are fifty percent of the guys are not graduating high school. That's just not right. Okay, like that's messed up. We're sitting here, like it's messed up. We yeah. have to fix that stuff. People are shooting each other. It's gotta stop. We've gotta try to fix this stuff. And, it's, and, and we have, you know, fortunately, many of us have a voice. And it's, we've got to, we've got to try. We've got to try to stop this and help in, in any way we can. Whether it's, you know, pressuring our, our elected officials and trying to get them to, to, to care about this even more, even more. I know they care, but more. They've got to do more because we can't have people running around shooting each other and we're trying to do business around here. Like, this is not right. It, and, and they don't, it's, they, they, they're not, we've got to be able to inspire these young people to do something great. We've got to share with them the great things that we do. Look, Nike does amazing things by showing like, Michael Jordan flying through the air and LeBron James doing his thing and Serena Williams, you know, just going wild on the court. Like we need to do similar things in business and show that this is a, a, a amazing path. Okay, we don't, 
you know, I, I always like to say, like, unfortunately, like, you know, we you know, I hear from people, oh, we got to talk about entrepreneurship in the in the <laughs> inner cities and whatever. I'm like, they know entrepreneurship better than any of us. <laughs> the problem is they're the wrong kind of entrepreneurs. <laughs> Okay, and they have to lock them up for that stuff. Okay, like, I'm, it's a problem. Like, we, they, they get it. But we have to show them, like, the amazing stuff. That's right. And we can. And it's our responsibility to do that and go and spend time with young people. And the work that you do is what it's all about. And, like, we've got to do more of that. We've got to fund more guys like that. We've got to be involved in that. And we have to give our time and our energy and, and, and do anything and everything we can because this place – this is our place and we gotta make it, we gotta make it great. We gotta make it great and that's part of it. Oh, that's, that's, that's awesome. The, uh, the really cool thing I found about, you know, working with artists and instigators and something that I take pride in as an naval officer, I've, I've tried to build teams wherever I've been, uh, been. And, you know, I have an awesome team, Katie Cohen, who's in the back, the community manager at Benjamin Staff, she runs the show and she's like a rock star and she's from Drexel. And that's what I really am passionate about is building Building, building teams, and if we all focus on building the right teams with complementary skill sets, I think we're all going to go really, really far. One thing I found awesome about artists and instigators is they got an awesome team, and they all bring something unique to the table, compatible skill sets. You're so fortunate to see hundreds of deals come across your desk weekly. You know, when you look at a team, what advice do you have for, for Jim, who's about to scale his business and probably hire 25 people nationally? How do you go about building the right team? That's critical to your business and scaling. Well, I'm sure you know, but <laughs> he's pretty good. Um, but I, I look, it, it comes down to something I would say earlier. I mean, you got to have people on your, on your team that you like. I mean, it's like the same thing that we, in, we invest. I mean, you have to, you can't just bring someone onto your team just because I hear this person, you know, she's really smart, but she's not nice. Like, Okay, like, <laughs> go with the nice and then you'll work up to the smart, okay? Like, you go with, I mean, I, like, seriously. I mean, like, it, it, you, if people are not good people, it's not going to work. Um, it, it, it's, it, I believe that. Maybe I'm a little altruistic or whatever you want to say, but I, I, I really, truly believe that. Um, and that's, that's what I look for. I mean, that's what I, you know, when, when, we, when I see teams and I talk to people about what they're going to find or how they're going to bring people together, make sure there's a fit. Make sure there's a cultural fit. I mean, you know, there's so much politically correct stuff that goes on, but some of my companies, they, they have nicknames for each other and they say things that are probably a little inappropriate, but like they get along and they're friends and they have, and, they, and, and, that's, and that's important. I mean, it's one of the things that, you know, I, I you know, I, I see companies do all sorts of kinds of retreats or do things outside of the office to just find out what people are like. Mm. You know, even if it's, you know, physical work together, whether it, maybe it's volunteering, maybe it's different kinds of things where you, you bring your team together and you'll find out pretty quickly if the good and the bad. Um, that's, it's, it's important. It's, it's, it's it, you know, that, that's just my, that's, that's, that's my, that's my personal view. Um, and I, I don't, I don't want to, you know, dude, life's too tough to work with jerks. You know what I mean? Like you want to work with good people. I was chatting with uh, Chad earlier and he mentioned that you had a secret tip. You want to, sh you want to share with this with the group? Well, what, which one? Okay, no the, the biggest, the biggest, best one that's going to guide us to success. Yeah. I, it, I, so typically I'll have a big slide that'll show them up. It, my secret tip, right? I mean, my secret tip of sort of to make it, to sort of get it done and, and make it happen is just literally get off the couch and go try. Like, just give it a shot. Just try. Like, just try to make it happen. It's amazing how many people will come and sit with us and say, if you fund me, I'm going to go do this. <laughs> and I say... Not me, like it's not us, right? But, but if you're trying, you're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna fall, you're gonna scrape your knee, you're gonna, I mean, like, you're, you're gonna lose money, you, you know, all sorts of stuff will happen, but you'll learn through all that. And you'll try, and you'll try, I mean, like, and you may realize that it's totally wrong, that it's totally wrong, but you gotta go, go you gotta give it a shot. You got to go and give it a shot, especially 
when they, you know, in situations when people want to come and want, you know, raise money from me. I mean, I kind of, I'm going to say this again, and I said it the other day. I mean, like a, a kid who's in college asked me the question, said, how do I raise money if I'm in college? I go, you, and I go to school every day. I go, well, then you shouldn't raise money. <laughs> because my money works 100% of the time, and you're going to go to college 50% of the time. Like, it's not going to work. I don't, I, and I'm not, I'm not, you know, Peter Thiel or Thiel or however he pronounces his name. And the fact, I mean, I, I'm not saying drop out. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying, like, if you're going to do something, do it 100%. You have to do it 100%. It's no matter, it's like nothing, it's like everything else. I mean, if you want to be a great basketball player, you're going to go out there and you're going to work hard. This guy was a great basketball player and soccer player. Right here. <laughs> I mean, college soccer, Navy, real deal, right? I mean, like, at the Naval Academy, real deal. Like, so, like, like you can't just, tr like, oh, I'm going to do a little bit of this. No, you got to practice. You got to work really hard. You got to try to make it happen. And, and you've got to, you've just got to go 100%. And I, I, it's, it's amazing. And, when you, and, and let me tell you something. Those people, whether we invest in them or we don't invest in them, when we see them, we know who these people are. It's so obvious. You all know who those people are. It's obvious. It's the guy who's, like, who's got this. Who's, 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 every time they hear no, it's like, when's our next meeting? It's that girl who's like, I'm going <laughs> to, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just going to make this happen. I don't really care. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't think I could be in this meeting? I'm going to be in this meeting. You don't think I can get, you know, like, I, I'm just, I'm just going to make it happen. Like, that's where. Like crash and weddings. Yes. <laughs> Well, he's, he's referring to Wedding Crashers, which is one of my favorite movies. I, I mean, how could it not be? The guys, like, they posed as venture capitalists. I mean, like, I, it was hilarious. But the whole, to me, the moral of the story of that movie was totally different than, you know, it was, it was hilarious. But what that, story, what, what that movie was all about was, like, you know, as one of the movie posters, like, invites are for losers, right? That's one of the, what was one of the movie posters. Like, it, there is no party you can't be invited to. There is no company you can't get into the front door of. You can figure it out. You know, how do you do it? Well, again, today, there's unbelievable opportunities to figure out what people are into. You can figure out, you know, Mike has a son or a daughter and she played, you know, basketball last night or she's on, in the choir or this and that or, you know, his wife is a lawyer at, at, at you know, Pepper Hamilton and, and somehow I know someone there who can connect me there to here. And like, you can do all this stuff because like, you can get yourself in today in so in ways that you never have been able to get all this because all this information is out there. You know, I, I go crazy when people say I, I don't know some, something about something. I mean, like, my kids know like how to go to Wikipedia and look stuff up. And I, I figure in the business world, you should as well. I mean, like you can learn so much and you can figure out, you can, you, there's no party or no company that you can't at least get a shot to try. You can try to get in. And, and, and by the way, I mean, you know, the, the story of some of the greatest companies out there is they fail like crazy and then something happens. I mean, look at, you know, look at some of these gaming companies. Like, what was it, Scott? Angry Birds? I mean, <laughs> John Wanamaker. Oh, Pop. I mean, all these companies, they're like disasters, right? I mean, they were, they're going out of business, and next thing you know, they get a game, and then they, they hit one game, and it pops. I mean, like... John Wanamaker went bankrupt three times. Right? What, it, Wayne, I mean, that's it's crazy. Wayne's business partner is Mark Echo, and one thing I really like that he says is, if you have an idea, you're an entrepreneur. Raise your hand if you have an idea. Every hand should go up because there's not one person who doesn't have an idea. And it's the mantra of A&I that is why I get up every morning and get it done. And I think if we all strive to do that, we're going to make Philly a better pace. So before we open the Q&A, let me get a quick round of applause for, for Wayne. <laughs>